Hi everybody, I'm Richard from Small Caliber Arms Review. It is a nasty, miserable day outside. The snow's coming down, so we're not going to go out and do any shooting today. But um, I recently picked up this. This is the EMF or Early Modern Firearms Gambler Royale. It's a factory engraved 45 Colt single action army, uh, four and three quarter inch barrel on it. It is unloaded. I have already checked it. But anyways, we're going to make a holster for this thing befitting of a gambler. It's the Gambler Royale, so we might as well make one that goes with it. Now, years ago when I got into cowboy action shooting, it's when I started doing my leather work. I have not been doing it that long, but this was uh, the holster I made for my persona. I shot um, B-Western, they call it, so I didn't have to be exactly period correct. This is a Buscadero style holster, which means that the holster actually drops down lower than the belt. The butt is uh, hot, lower than the uh, the belt and this is not it's it's not bad but it's not real fancy i did line it with suede on the inside i did make a lined actual holster piece for it so it's smooth leather inside and out uh, and i made this for my ruger vaqueros these are stainless steel 38 caliber revolvers single action armies um, and I put the little silver and turquoise, fake turquoise and fake silver conchos on it. But it's a pretty good looking little holster. I've got some dummy rounds loaded in the back of it there. They are nickel so that it won't corrode the, the leather. But what we're going to do is we're going to make the holster for the uh, Gambler Royale. And I'm going to use the pattern. I'm not going to make a new pattern. This is the uh, one from 310 to Yuma. This was designed and I purchased the pattern from Will Gormley. And this is the same pattern he used, as far as I know, to make the one for the movie. And it's a beautiful holster. We're not going to do this tooling on it. We'll do some different tooling. But I know that this size is perfect for this firearm because they're both identical firearms pretty much. They're the same size, dimensions and everything. Same length barrel, four and three quarter on it. Um, but we're going to do a Ranger style belt on it like this one. This is a little bit wider. I think this is an inch and a half billet on the two and a half inch wide belt. But we're going to narrow it down a little bit because I've got a buckle here that uh, I think would look pretty good with the, um, the Gambler Royale. It's got kind of the same engraving on it as the Gambler Royale does, although it doesn't have the hibiscus flowers on the uh, the firearm. It does have the nice scroll work tooling on it, and we may put a little bit of that on the holster too. I don't know. Uh, I'm just going to kind of wing it, but I do have some stamps here and these are card suits the hearts spades diamonds and clubs and we're going to do a little decorative border with this and some other stamps that i've got and uh, we're just going to kind of wing it and and see what we come up with anyways i'm going to get out of the fancy duds and get into something a little more comfortable while i'm doing some leather work all right that's a little better just a ball cap and t-shirt anyways i got to get this stuff moved out of the way and then we'll get a couple pieces of leather cut out for it now like i said i'm going to do a double layer so i'm going to do inside and outside smooth sides out rough sides together so i need to make it a little bit thinner because i want to make sure that the gun goes in and out pretty easy and one of the things i did notice is i tried this out on a couple of the different holsters and with the uh, the one i made from the hand of god rig it's rough inside and it actually kind of that roughness on the engraving there on both the cylinder and the barrel and most of the ejector housing there kind of scrapes away at that leather a little bit and it left a little bit of a brown residue on there uh, it cleans off pretty easy just keep it oiled up and everything will be cool but anyways we'll get everything cleared away and then we'll get to making a holster all right i got all the other holsters out of the way this is the emf Gambler Royale. It's a pretty good looking uh, firearm and you can see some of the factory engraving on it. It's a little harder to see on the black part there, but it's it's pretty nice looking stuff, I think, anyways. But we're going to take this thing and make a holster befitting a gambler. So what I'm going to do is this is a, this was my first attempt at the um, the hand of God rig and the color did not come out right. I thought it would be darker than that, but it didn't. But anyways, I want to, I'm going to use this pattern because I know that the shape of it is right for the firearm. And I'm going to use, this is the pattern I used from the, uh, I can't even remember where I got this from, but this was the pattern I used for the uh, Buscadero style belt. Now I'm only going to do one side, so I only need one side of it here. And I need to narrow this up where the fold line is just a little bit so it fits through there. It's pretty close, but I'm going to narrow it just a little bit, maybe a little bit on the inside, a little bit on the outside. And 
get it to fit in here. I'm also going to change this up a little bit. This is an inch and a half wide here, and the buckle I got is for a one inch. So I'm actually going to make this a little bit wider and do a ranger style where they kind of overpass and then the billets are on the outside of it and then this will mount on there with a the billet so the only parts i'm going to i'm going to use this belt i'm going to use this holster i'm going to use this toe plug that goes in there now i like the looks of a toe plug but they're kind of tough to sew in there we'll use this we'll change the pattern up a little bit and there's also a couple other little pieces this is a little trigger shelf that goes inside there and like i said i know this holster fits great so we'll do that and we'll use the billets. These are the billet patterns from the uh, Hand of God rig. So I've got to make this a little bit wider so that that'll fit on there. And this is, uh, I think, two and a half inches here. Yep, that's two and a half. So we'll make it two and a half the whole length of the belt. So it's going to take a chunk of leather to do that. This will may be made out of a little bit heavier leather and I might put a suede back on it too, but uh, I gotta do all the other stitching, the bullet loops and everything before I get to that. So first thing we're gonna do is get these pieces cut out. We'll get the holster part cut out and then we'll start working on the belt. All right, I got both pieces cut out, and after stamping and dyeing and all that kind of stuff, we'll get both pieces sewn together. Uh, I decided not to narrow this up at the fold line because I know that this holster already hangs nicely on a regular belt, so I think if I was to alter this width of this, it might tip one way or the other, so instead I'm just going to make the opening in the Buscadero belt a little bit wider. Okay, and for the toe plug and the trigger shelf, I'm gonna go even thicker because I've got to sew through the edge of this and the thicker the leather, the better it is. And if I can do it in one piece, that's even a bigger plus. All right, I've got all my pieces cut out for from Mr. Gormley's pattern. I've got my toe plug, got my little trigger shelf there, I've got my strap, and I've got the two holsters. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start working on this before I do the belt, and uh, I wanna do a little bit of practicing on this nice thin leather I've got here. Uh, I'll take a little scrap piece of it, and um, we'll see how it takes the stamping. All right, and you need to get a nice hard surface. This is a cutout from a cabinet place, and uh, a lot of times they throw these scraps away. And what I've done here is I've taken some of this uh, EVA foam. It's a floor mat for garages and stuff, and glued some of that on the bottom of it there with some contact cement, and it dampens the noise that's transferred from here into my bench and makes it a lot more enjoyable. Plus, with a nice solid surface like this, you get a lot better impression when you're doing your stamping. Now, I'm gonna case the leather, and I have always just taken water and cased it, and that's it. Uh, I've seen some people use some pretty elaborate um, methods of casing their leather, and really, I haven't had any issues with it. My image stays in there. Uh, I just have to keep wetting it every now and then. Not a big deal, but one of the things I'm going to do here is I'm going to let that water soak in for just a minute, and then I'm going to just establish a groove line on there. Not that I'm going to stitch or sew on this or anything, but then I'm going to take my stamps and um, give them a shot and see how they do. All right, playing around with this a little bit more off camera, I've taken and done a uh, couple parallel lines there, the same width as my ruler, and then went ahead and took my smallest camouflage tool I've got, 
and went ahead and did a border on both sides of it there. It kind of gives it that little scalloped edge look there, plus a little starburst or little fingers going off that way. And then just did a row of them right up there. And I think I kind of like that. I also played around with it a little bit on the sides here where I did the other two different directions there. So, I mean, I, I don't know. It's like I said, I'm just going to wing it and uh, we'll see what it looks like when it comes out. Now, I want to dye the hearts and the diamonds red, uh, but the whole holster being black is going to leave, you know, the clubs and the spades will be black, but they won't stand out that much. So I may do these in silver. I may do all of them in silver. I may just do the uh, clubs and spades in silver. Who knows? We'll uh, try it out and see what it looks like. Now there is definitely a lot of stamping that goes on around one of these and really just this stamp right here all the way around these two lines here would make a pretty good looking holster especially if you were to do it in browns and especially with some antiquing because the antiquing will get down in those grooves. Black is not going to show as much detail as the browns would on here but I think it's still going to look good. I got a lot of stamping to do to get around this thing with this little tiny one here. Now one of the things with these stamps, like I said with the smaller ones there, this little camouflage tool, it's pretty narrow, the surface area is small, so the amount of force, the pounds per square inch that you're getting on there are high because it's such a small area. These are probably, that's probably eight or ten times the surface area of that little camouflage tool there, maybe even more than that. So it takes more. Now I did find that when I was doing my little test piece over here it was better if I kind of tapped it around and moved it from corner to corner with each one of the pieces there so that it left a nice flat impression with crisp lines all the way around it. I'm gonna go for it see what I get like I said there's no rules if it doesn't look that great it's no big deal it's mine Now I have noticed that the heart stamp is the hardest one to hit. I think it has the most surface area. I have bounced it a couple times in there, um, but luckily it's where it won't be seen. So now that I've got all that stamping done, <clears throat> it doesn't leave me a whole lot of surface area left over on here. Um, and then I've still got the strap and I think I may change that strap up a little bit. Maybe do something a little more creative, I guess, on there. But um, that's what it'll look like, sort of. All right, I sketched out a couple ideas here. I think I'm gonna go with the flower and a little bit of the uh, scroll work there because it'll match the belt buckle a little bit better. Kind of tie the belt buckle in with the gambling theme of the, um, the holster, I think. Anyways, um, so I'm gonna get this transferred onto here and then go from there.
I think that'll work. All right, I've got it all glued up and I've got it pressed together, used all my pins and blow darts there to keep everything lined up. Now I'm going to go ahead and stitch it together. Now I'm going to stitch it properly and with the correct thread and then I'm probably going to pull all that back out after I'm done wet molding it because I just have this feeling that I should have done it the way I've done all the other ones. and wet molded everything first and then dyed it. It gets to be a real pain when you try to dye it when it's all put together and everything. Plus, when you sew it first and then dye it, you dye your thread too. So, I kind of wanted to avoid that, but um, I may just go ahead and pull all that stitching back out once I'm done and then re-stitch it again. But I've got to have this thing held together tightly so that when I wet mold it, because this is pretty tight right in here, and this being two layers glued together makes it even tougher. Um, and like I said, I've dyed it. I have not sealed it or anything yet. So it's going to be a mess. I, I just have this feeling it will be. But anyways, I'm going to take my thread and uh, peel off enough just to do this part. I'm not worried about the toe plug yet. I'm not going to sew around there. I just want this thing held together nice and tight. And then I'll go from there. About three times the amount of thread that you're going to use is what you're going to want on there. And um, I'm going to do a saddle stitch on it with two needles. See what happens. Okay, I've got that seam sewn up with the red thread on there. I've got the glue on there. It's all stuck together really well. And this is tight in there. This, I have, I can get it in there, but that's not the way it needs to be. I do need to wet mold it some. I don't wanna have real well-defined lines on there. I just want the gun to fit in and out of there easily. And it's gonna take a little bit of wet molding to get it right, so. I've got to get this thing soaked down, take a couple plastic bags here, wrap it around there. I'm okay if it's uh, if the holster winds up being just a little bit bigger than the pistol because I want it to not have necessarily zero retention, but I want it to be able to fit in there easily. So get this wet down, I'll take it up to the kitchen sink and uh, wet it all down really well. It's going to be a mess because this black dye that's on here is water-based, so I'm sure it's gonna bleed all over the place. And I'll just have to re-dye it again and get it uh, to where it looks good, hopefully. Normally, I would wet mold this and everything and then dye it afterwards, but I figured it, it's tough to get down inside there to get that dyed once you've uh, already got it wet molded and everything. 
So I'm going to give it a try and see what happens. Okay, I've got it wet molded. You can see the finish, the dye is, it really rinsed a lot of it away. Thank goodness it's a stainless steel sink and uh, it just went right down the drain. Um, but I wet it here so I could fold it over and I wet the whole inside, soak this in some nice hot, really hot water. That way when it dries, it'll actually be pretty hard. Uh, I did speed dry it a little bit in front of some heat and kind of, I guess, get it kick-started anyways. I was able to straighten up my seam a little bit. It needed a little bit of tweak in there. That's a nice thing about wet molding is that part of it you can do too. Um, but I'm gonna let that dry just like that. And right now with uh, three or four bags wrapped around there, it goes in and out pretty easy. So once I take the gun out of the plastic there, let's try that. It should be a really nice, not really zero retention, but Minimal retention, I guess. Yeah, I like that. I like the way it fits in and out of there. And I think it'll look pretty good with it once I'm all done with everything. But anyways, I'm going to have to let it dry just like that so it will retain its shape. I like that I flared that out a little bit so it, it's a little better chance of getting it in there. And uh, the trigger shelf is in the right spot. The end of the barrel comes right down to where I'm going to have to put the toe plug in there. Now, I kind of wish I would have already put the toe plug in it, so I'm going to have to kind of uh, finagle that in there, get it in there, and uh, get it shaped right. Toe plugs are a real pain to sew in, a real pain, but it is so worth the effort when you get it in there and get it in there right because they look so good. This one's got a little bit of a curve to it, and I am going to have to, I might even have to trim it up a little bit to get it to fit down inside there. But so far, I like it. Not real happy with the dye job. I really wish I would have wet molded it first and then did the uh, dyeing on it. But like I said, it's a pain to have this all sewn together. Plus, it would change the color of my thread and I want to avoid that. So I'm going to have to pull all these stitches out and then restitch the whole thing. And of course, I got to stitch all the way around it too to kind of set it off. Okay, the holster is all dyed up and all dried up and all cleared up, so it's ready to go. It's uh, pretty much a zero retention, which is, eh, it's, it's okay. I'm going to put a hammer thong on it anyways, but uh, it fits in there nicely. It goes in and out nicely. It sits in there nicely. I've got everything glued together. I pulled all my stitches back out of it. It's all dyed and cleared and everything, so now I've got to restitch the whole thing not just this seam but i've got to go all the way around the entire border and the toe plug so i'm going to get started on that and that's going to take a little bit all right that was a grueling experience and not my best toe plug work it started off pretty good and then got a little squirrely over here to the side but luckily that'll be pointed down and the outside of it looks pretty good so that'll be seen this will be seen that seam didn't come out too bad um but I kind of like it. It's okay. Now I've got to finish going all the way around here, all the way around the apron and back up to there. And that's purely a decorative stitch other than helping to hold the two layers together. It really doesn't do anything. This is structural along with the glue on there so that it holds together really well. I did let it sit up and dry so it does fit nicely. Very little retention on it, which is what I wanted. And um, I think it looks pretty good so far. That is the holster part of it. All stitched up. I, I really wanted to do something a little fancier with this thing, but it would involve a lot of lost, lost wax casting and some metal work and stuff, but it'll be all right. And there's a few things I should have done differently. Um, I've got two layers there. I've got thread on the inside here. That's probably not good just because of the gun going in and out of the holster. It doesn't touch it, but it could eventually start wearing on those threads. And they're not really buried below the surface. They actually stick up just a little bit, which is another thing that's not the best thing to do either because it causes wear on the thread and the thread's gonna be the weakest part. It's not gonna be an everyday holster for me, so it's just a pretty much for show. Um, and, and I think it looks pretty good. I think it looks pretty good with the EMF Gambler Royale. Um, 
it's got the gambler theme to it with the you know the card suits on there and everything i was going to paint these i tried a little spot with some of the paint that's uh some of the acrylics paint and it just did not show up well the coverage was really bad for it um but that is as far as I'm going to go with this part of it. The next thing I got to do is make the belt for it. And I think I'm going to make that in a separate video just because there's a lot going on with this. And there's a lot going on with the belt too. I may actually take this and move it up a little bit. Who knows? It's an experiment and um, it just doing it to show you that you can make a holster regardless of your skill level. I've only made a few of them, a handful of them. Some of them you've seen on this channel, some of them you haven't. But um, it is what it is. And that's as far as i'm going to go with the holster part of it like i said i'll make a separate video on the belt just because there's a lot more going on with it and i might have misspoke a couple times i think i said this was nylon thread this is actually a polyester thread and it's supposed to be waxed although the wax is very light on it um and it's probably got a little german shepherd hair in it too so uh, it, it doesn't look too bad to me anyways if you could hit this button up here to check out some of my other videos hit this button here to subscribe if you haven't already and thanks for taking a look at making the gambler royale holster